Welcome back to Cardinal Science. On this video, looking at percentage yield and empirical formulae. There are two parts of this video. This is part one, so please look out for part two at the end of this video. In this video, we'll be looking at specification points 1.30, 1.31. In part two of this video, we'll move on to 1.32 and 1.33. So for 1.30, we'll look at calculating the percentage yield. 1.31 understanding how the formulae of simple compounds can be obtained experimentally, including metal oxides, water, and salts containing water for crystallization. Okay, so for 1.30, we're looking at how to calculate percentage yield. Now, the reacting masses calculations that we did in the previous video, what they do is provide a theoretical mass of the product. Now, it's theoretical because it assumes that the reaction goes to completion and is 100% efficient. But in real life, this is rarely the case. So we call this the theoretical yield, the yield that you could get if everything went perfectly. The actual mass that we produce is known as the actual yield. And this is always less than the theoretical yield. And we therefore compare these two numbers to calculate a percentage that gives us a percentage yield. So this is best illustrated with an example. So here we've got magnesium reacting with oxygen, according to this equation. Now, when 48 grams of magnesium is reacted with excess oxygen, the theoretical yield of magnesium oxide is 80 grams. We calculated this in the previous video. So if everything goes perfectly in this reaction, if all of the magnesium reacts properly with the oxygen, we should get 80 grams of magnesium oxide. However, when we actually do it, we only get 60 grams of magnesium oxide. So to calculate a percentage yield, what we do is we figure out what the theoretical yield and the actual yields are, and we calculate the percentage. So we take the actual, which is 60, we divide that by 80 and times it by 100, which is of course 75%. One way to think about this is the same kind of calculation that you would do if you're trying to figure out what you scored uh, percentage-wise on a test at school. So your theoretical score would be 100%, would be you got all the questions right. So say the question was out of 100, then your theoretical yield would be 100, but say you only scored 75 marks. So you actually scored 75 out of a theoretical 100, and therefore you do 75 over 100 multiplied by 100. And you could do that whether or not the theoretical yield is 100 or not, if it was for example, a 50 mark paper, then you would do, say you scored 25, you'd have 25 over 50 times by 100. What you actually got divided by what you could have got times by 100. That's the same with percentage yields in chemistry. Okay, so let's do a little bit of practice then. Have a go at these two, and then we'll go through them. Okay, so question one. What is the percentage yield if 200 grams of product are formed when the theoretical yield is 250. So the 200 grams is our actual and our 250 is a theoretical. So we're going to do 200 divided by 250 multiplied by 100. This will be 80%. For number two, what is the percentage yield if 120 grams of product are formed when the theoretical yield is 240? So we're going to do our actual, which is 120, divided by our theoretical, which is 240, times 100, which is, of course, 50%. Okay, now, to do this, I would recommend you go back and watch the video on reacting masses and moles calculations. But if you've now seen that, you should be able to answer these. This is essentially how these questions tend to look in exams. So they combine them with reacting masses calculation. So... Let's do the reacting masses calculation and then follow it through to the percentage yield. So what do we have? Our step one is to read the question, if you remember. So step one, we have 36.5 grams of HCl with excess NaOH and only 40 grams of NaCl was formed. So that is going to be our actual yield. So what we need to do first is to calculate the theoretical yield and then we can calculate the percentage yield. So we're going to figure out the moles of HCl. We're doing 36.5, which is the mass, 
divided by the MR of HCl, which also happens to be 36.5. That, of course, means we have one mole of HCl. Now, we are looking at NaCl, so we need to look at the ratio between HCl and NaCl. And since it's one to one, we therefore should produce one mole of NaCl. Okay, now that one mole of NaCl should have a mass that equals one multiplied by the MR of NaCl, which is 58.5. So we should have got our theoretical yield is 58.5 grams. However, we actually got 40. So we'll do 40 divided by 58.5 multiplied by 100, which is 68.4%. Okay, moving on to 1.31. Obtaining formulae experimentally, and we're looking at metal oxides here. So how can we figure out the formula of a compound of a metal oxide experimentally, i.e. in the lab. So what we'll need is a crucible, which is essentially a fireproof little pot with a lid. And then we're going to use our usual Bunsen burner setup, so a tripod with a Bunsen burner and a gauze. Okay, so here's what you would do. We're going to use the example of magnesium oxide here. Okay, so you take your crucible and the lid that you're going to use when they're empty and you measure their mass. So whatever that is, you could say maybe it's 120 grams. Then you're going to add a sample of magnesium of known mass. So it doesn't really matter how much you add, but you need to know the mass of magnesium that you're going to add. Okay, you can put that in the crucible by itself. You're then going to heat it strongly. So you're going to have a blue flame heating it strongly. And what you're going to do while it's heating is keep opening the lid and closing it again every, say, 30 seconds or so, because you want to react the magnesium with oxygen. And of course, if you leave the lid on, the magnesium will react with the oxygen in there. But then, of course, that oxygen will run out, so you need to let more in. Now, what you're going to do throughout this is to monitor the mass of the crucible. Okay, so you're going to let it cool, measure its mass. And remember, at this point, the crucible contains the magnesium oxide and the remaining magnesium and the lid. Okay, you're going to keep monitoring that. Now, when the mass stops increasing, that will be the point at, at which the magnesium has stopped reacting with oxygen. So when all of the magnesium has reacted with oxygen, the mass will stop increasing, okay? So at this point, all of the Mg has reacted with oxygen to form MgO. We then try to calculate the mass of the magnesium oxide by subtracting the final mass that you just measured from the crucible and the lid, okay? And that will give you the magnesium oxide on its own. Okay, so the point of this experiment is to figure out the mole ratio in the magnesium and the oxygen. So really what we're just doing is working through to figure out the masses of both of those. So imagine we started off with a crucible and lid that weighed 120 grams together. Then we then add 4.8 grams of magnesium and we do our reaction. And the mass afterwards, when it stopped changing, is 128 grams. To figure out the mass of the magnesium oxide that's now formed, we take away 120 from 128 which gives us eight grams of magnesium oxide. We know that there are 4.8 grams of magnesium in that magnesium oxide, and therefore the difference between them will tell us how much oxygen there was. Now we need to find out the moles of each of those. So here's how we do this. The moles of oxygen are going to be 3.2, which is the mass divided by the AR, which is 16, which is going to be 0 0.2. The moles of magnesium it's going to be the mass, which is 4.8 divided by 24, which is also 0 0.2. Therefore, the ratio between the two, so 0 0.2 to 0 0.2, is obviously the same as 1 to 1. Therefore, the formula of magnesium oxide is going to be MgO. Okay, so likewise, let's give this another try with some different numbers. So our crucible and our lid still weigh 120 grams, but this time we add 30 grams of magnesium. And after the reaction, we have 170 grams of magnesium oxide plus the crucible and the lid. 
which means of course that we have 50 grams of magnesium oxide and 20 grams of oxygen. So now we do the same calculations, oxygen and magnesium. Moles of oxygen are going to be 20 divided by 16. And the moles of magnesium are going to be 30 divided by 24. So for both of those, we get 1.25 as the number of moles. And the ratio between the two is of course one to one, which means that our equation is MgO. Now, if you're wondering about the order, i.e. why did I put Mg before O, in ionic compounds, in metal oxides, the metal always comes first in the equation. So it couldn't be OMG, it would have to be MgO. As always, I hope it's been helpful for you. You've been watching Cardinal Science. Please leave a comment below if you have any questions or comments about this and like and subscribe if you find it useful. Thank you very much.